All right, so it's 2018. We are, I'm, I'm with Toronto FC, obviously. We're going to go play against Club America in the CONCACAF Champions League. We are going to play the, the return leg. So we already played them in Toronto. I think we beat them 2-1. So we're going down there. We need a result. Uh, they got the away goal. So it's a big game. I remember, I want to say it was after arrival or or just right before or after a team meal. Um, I was, you know, my phone was blowing up. I had a message from just fans from Club America. Um, you know, obviously you get the whole, we wish you a terrible stay, wish you a terrible time. You know, you're going to lose that kind of thing. The typical, whatever you suck, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a couple messages then down to down there towards the end. And it was from a Club America fan. And he sent me a gun and a picture of his face. I don't know what made me open it, but I just opened it because I had so many from that same person. It was just different pictures of the gun, different positions of the gun, you know, holding it up to his head. And I was just like, this is this is weird. You know, this is weird. And um, in Spanish, he used the term negro de mierda, which is like black piece of shit. So, you know, uh, you're used to a lot of things. And that, to be honest with you, that wasn't even the startling part. I, I wasn't really too worried about that. Because I'm used to that type of language from you know fans. When you go and play in Concacaf and you play in these places, it's it that's a, that's the normal occurrence. Um, but for me, it was heightened with the the pictures of the firearm and you know the notions that he was going to find me around and 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 shoot me. That was the type of thing that kind of made it a little bit uneasy. Because like I said, you're you're there to play a game, you're there to compete, but you don't want to feel that your life's in danger or even the notion, the idea, and you, you want to take those things serious because it's your life, right? It's your life, it's your teammates, people around you. So that's nothing to play with. If I had to guess how many times I've, you know, been a part of some racial type of abuse, I, I couldn't even guess, to be honest. Uh, easily in the hundreds, 200s, 300s. It's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a very normal thing in a lot of parts of the world. For example, in Mexico City and a fan calls you a nigger. That that's different because that is so normalized now, and so like you just learn to block it out. As opposed to when it's you know thousands of fans on the field, that's a little bit different to block out because that's another element in the game. Playing in Holland was a cup game versus a team called Den Bosch, and uh, there was a ball played to me in the corner. I remember running onto it, and as I ran onto it, I started to hear. The, the chance, and this had never happened to me at that time. So the first time it happened, I kind of just like, oh, I think they were booing me. I think it was boo, boo, boo. And then the second time I got a ball played to the corner, that's when I really knew and I heard it because then I had my players, you know, approaching me, talking about it. I had the referee coming to me saying, hey, so that's when I was like, oh, it's not boo. It's ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, it's a, it's a monkey chant. And so, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a difficult moment, but I remember I was just trying to to make my way, find my way with the club in Europe. And I just really tried to block it out. And when I look back at it now, I, I realize how just significant of a moment that was. And and if I could do it over, I probably would have walked off the field. I don't know how you find the solution, but how do you make it so that FIFA sees fine as when a player in Porto or, you know, Balotelli or myself or Boateng get racially abused by an entire stadium? You know what I'm saying? And so when that matters, um, I think you'll have a better understanding of how FIFA's trying to grow the game. But I think in a lot of ways, FIFA's been disappointed with with whether it be race relations, um, the, the way they've treated the women's game. Um, it's just been poor. And so people take cues on these big corporations and they see them act that way and, and fuck off you know, race relations and things that are going on in the race world. That's what they do. So. You need FIFA to take a stand. You need them to be brave and, and just do the right thing. And so until that happens, you're gonna see more of the same. You'd be naive to, to not understand the, whether it be systematic racism or just a racial injustice when it comes to, whether it be black lawyer, black soccer player, black whatever, there's always a different microscope um, when, when you're talking about the color of the skin and so. My message to those people committing racial abuse would be, I mean, just what my mom and dad used to tell me, treat people how you want to be treated. And uh, if, if, if you wouldn't want somebody to call you a racial slur or use your race against you, you shouldn't do that to other people.